Hey guys, welcome back. It's Shelby and today we are making a necklace and we are using oven dry clay to do it and then a little bit of nature like a leaf or a branch and a toothpick and that's basically everything we need other than like a chain and findings kit. These things are so handy. Um, if you're not familiar with them, can I get it without the glare? Kind of. So they have uh, long sticks in them, you know, little circles, clasps, and the things for dangly earrings. Basically everything you need to make uh, jewelry or if you lose jewelry or lose an earring back, just basically everything you need to fix it. So they're super handy. I'll link a good one below down in the description along with everything I use, along with my socials, and along with a couple other videos that I've made with uh, oven dry clay that I think are pretty cool and I'd love to share with you guys. So today's video, honestly, I'm not sure how I want to look, either a square or a circle. Um, basically just like a nice pendant and then with a little bit of nature, pressed into it, like I said, either a branch or a leaf, um, and then use a toothpick to write a word, like love or hope or something like that. Just kind of one of those inspirational pieces of jewelry that you can wear whenever you're feeling down and it just lifts your spirits and makes you feel happy. So I'm making one of those today and I hope you guys like it. Let's get going. So we're starting with our three things of clay. All of them are effects. Two of them are just kind of a sparkly pearlized effect and the white one goes translucent. Grab a couple little chunks of all of them and start kneading them until they are soft enough to work with. This is kind of the hardest part of working with the clay is making sure that it is all nice and soft and malleable. Once you do that, we're gonna start building our marbleized stone effect. So I'm gonna take some of the gray and some of the black and put it into these like ropey things and then just twist them together and that way you get a little bit of the black inside the gray and it just kind of looks like marbleized and a little bit organic and that's what we're going for so twist it up and smush it together but be careful not to mix the clay too much you don't want dark gray you want light gray with little veins of deep black running through it so that is the goal there next we are going to be combining all of the different colors uh, basically we're just making the pendant like we're not doing anything fancy um, so whatever pattern you want the pendant to have that's how you need to stack it so I've got a marbleized gray here I've got some black I've got straight gray and I've got some white and I'm basically just gonna stack them I'm gonna put a little bit of black in between all of the layers and then a little bit of gray a little bit of black a little bit of white you know kind of stack it up however you want but uh, we're not really mixing anymore these are going to be the layers so make sure however you stack it that's how you want your piece to look and don't worry if it looks like a smushed little bit of nothing right now we'll figure out the shape in a moment right now we're really just trying to stack up the colors so once I get those all up then I'm going to start shaping it I've decided for this necklace that I want to go with a round shape so even though it looks like you know a tiny little rubber snowman that you've just like booped on the head one too many times we're going to flatten it out without mixing it that's the thing is like i'm kind of flattening rounding the edges and just pressing flat as i go without like truly rolling it over on itself or kneading it at all just pushing together so there's no air bubbles that's important and just rounding it out and smushing it flat and creating a pendant like i said i've decided on round but in this way it keeps those lovely layers that you've put in you can see kind of the black and the gray the lines of black the big chunk of white in there and then the pale gray and it looks like a little bit of marbleized stone that you've cut out uh, because you keep those layers in there next we're going to take our findings kit and i'm going to grab one of the long wires with the flat end and just stick it through my pendant this is going to help me attach it as a necklace pendant when i'm done so much easier to to do it before you cook it rather than after so we're going to do that and next up we are going to decorate it this is a dried flower that i just have i dry a lot of my bouquets that i get i just like them but you see how the back is all kind of spiny and it's a bit like thicker and sturdier than the very fragile petals that's what i'm going to be using it's still a flower shape it's still a very nice organic shape and the petals would go everywhere so i'm just going to press it in make sure i get enough rough outline because i'm going for that fossilized flower look and then pull it up and you'll notice that it leaves a little bit of the organic material inside there i'm going to carefully pick most of that out with a toothpick just because there's too much in there it looks too intentional but i don't want to take all of it out like a little bit can stay in there but don't you know spend hours picking it out just a couple minutes just to make sure that it is 
pretty clean and fossil-y looking. You can add a little leaf in there if you want. That's what I'm doing. I always love flowers with leaves when they're in silhouette. I'm going to make the uh, petals and stem and leaf just a little bit more apparent with my toothpick here. I'm going to add in a couple more lines. You could do this without the flower, but without that organic material in there, it doesn't really read as 100% natural. Adding a few more lines that people can't see isn't a big deal if they can see parts of the petals in there. Next up, I'm writing my message. For this necklace, I wanted to say hope. Basically, if it's a straight line letter, like the H, you can kind of drag it down. But for everything with a curve on it, I'm going in with a bunch of little up-down motions and basically just stabbing the letters out. And then going back in until I create a trench with it, like up, down, up, down, kind of like a sewing needle and uh, carving out the word hope. And then we're going to get it into the oven and we're going to bake it at, I think, 230 degrees for half an hour until it is nice and done and complete. And we have our hope pendant that we can string onto a necklace and see how it turned out. But uh, here's a close up before it goes in the oven and the clay changes. Looks pretty good. Okay, you guys, the pendant is out of the oven and honestly, so cool. Looks like marbleized stone because the white is in effects clay. It goes translucent, which is really cool. It gives it like an amazing minerally quality. It's hard to see it with the ring light, at least from what I can see on the camera lens. Maybe it'll be different later. I'll do a close up at the end to offset that. The flower, the little bits of the flower are still in it. So it's a really cool kind of like fossilized flower effect. You got the little uh, branch and leaf and then hope came out really clear, which is nice. Again, it's kind of hard to see on here with the bright light, but I will zoom in at the end and it looks like it's like cut into this gorgeous marbleized rock. The um, kind of black and silver I used were also effects, but they weren't translucent. They were more just like pearlized, which means they have shimmer, um, but it's really cool. It just looks like a piece of cut carved marble with like a little fossilized flower in there with the little bits of the flower hanging on. So this is awesome. We need to finish it up. Where did I put my chain? Here it is. I didn't drop it. I just set it down. So I have my chain here and I'm going to see if I can just fold the ring around the chain because that's easier for me than actually stringing it. Grab your multi-purpose tool. These things are amazing. If you don't have one, you need one in your life. Girl's best friend. Just uh, make a little loop out of that. We're going to string it on the necklace and then close the loop. Just grab the two ends and pinch and you're done. Perfect, so we're going to put this on really quickly. Oh, this is so cool. It's very lightweight because it's clay and not actually stone or marble. There we go, I'm just adjusting it in the camera lens. That's pretty cool. I don't know if this is the right outfit choice for it, but just imagine like a t-shirt and jeans because it's more of a casual pendant. Um, but that's really neat, I really like that. I think that looks, um, really good. And even if it flips over, which I realized it was backwards, it just looks like a cool piece of marble. So not a big deal, but I do like it facing forward. And I think it's really cool. Hope you guys like it too. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you here again soon. Bye for now. So this is the close up. You can see the word hope cut in much more easily now, as well as the flower, the stem, the leaf, and the actual done dandelion imprint itself with the little bit of leaves in there. I think that's really cool. Personally, I really like that. The marbling effect we did, and then kind of the cuts of actual stone. You can see the effects more clearly here on the backside where it just looks like fauceted stone, like that translucent thing that marble kind of does sometimes. I don't actually know the name for it, but that like translucent, beautiful, minerally crystal effect. That's basically what the clay does when you buy the uh, translucent white effects one. But this is it guys. I hope you like it. I really do. I think it's beautiful and I hope you guys do too. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.